Um, we've got one more, one more award, uh, the award for information policy, and then we're going to do our breakouts. Um, our information policy IP3 award uh, this year is going to the Stop Hate for Profit campaign. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and, and this is the campaign uh, I think you all have heard of because it, it rocked the summer of 2020 in tech policy. Uh, Stop Hate for Profit is a partnership uh, between a number of groups, uh, and some of them are, are on with us today as well. Um, the Anti-Defamation League, Color of Change, Common Sense Media, uh, Free Press, NAACP, Sleeping Giants, LULAC, Mozilla, National Hispanic Media Coalition. And if I miss one, I know I'm going to be corrected in it later, but I, uh, it's a fantastic partnership between these groups. And uh, Stop Pay for Profit as a campaign this summer, they mobilized 1,200 businesses and nonprofits and countless individuals uh, to call for a pause in the use of Facebook and its advertising platform and demand changes in accountability and moderation of hate speech and harassment on Facebook's various services. If you remember anything about what you hear tonight about Stop Hate for Profit, I hope you remember this. Uh, this campaign has set the pace for calling for bold change in content moderation while holding true, I believe, they're holding true to the values of free expression. You know, too often when the public calls for moderation of content uh, or removal of hate speech or correction of misinformation, the opposition calls it censorship instead of what it actually is. It's a call from the community to uh, a community of users to, to set higher standards for content moderation on dominant platforms. Uh, Stop Pay for Profits has mobilized direct action against a corporate actor in a righteous call for it to change its private practices. Private practices. They have not called for the government to involve itself in moderating content like some policymakers wish to do where ideology can creep in. If we are going to continue to have platforms with the power to moderate, uh, and Tim Wu talked about, you know, we still stand up and defend for 230 because it gives that power to moderate uh, at public knowledge. Uh, but if we're going to have that, it must be balanced by users empowered to make choices in the marketplace and to demand these sorts of standards like Stop Hate for Profit has demanded this summer. Um, now, uh, Stop Hate for Profit team, I know the work continues. Uh, and I know the lead partners do not consider the campaign to be over, not in the least, but for their bold leadership in fighting hate and misinformation, uh, balanced against free expression principles. Uh, we are very proud to present the IP3 award for information policy to the Stop Hate for Profit campaign. And with us today to accept the award on behalf of a wonderful list of organizations uh, leading uh, that campaign is former IP3 award winner, Jessica Gonzalez, who is the co-CEO of Free Press. So Jessica, where are you? There she is. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for those kind words, that amazing introduction, and for your leadership at Public Knowledge. It's been so great to partner with you this year and for many years. Thank you for this award. Uh, it's not only beautiful, y'all, uh, it's also fun. My kids have uh, had a really great time playing with this. And, and luckily it's still intact for this evening. Um, but it's really wonderful to be here at this event with so many people doing incredibly important work. Congratulations to the other awardees tonight as well. It was so great to hear even more about the fantastic work that you all are doing in the public interest. Um, so as Chris mentioned, the Stop Hate for Profit campaign uh, wouldn't be possible without uh, nine groups coming together. And I will just reiterate the groups um, because there's a lot of us and hard to remember. So we have Free Press, Color of Change, National Hispanic Media Coalition, who I believe is also uh, here on the call this evening, LULAC, ADL, NAACP, Common Sense Media, Sleeping Giants, and Mozilla. And we came together in, in late, July, late June, excuse me, uh, because many of us were thinking along the same lines. Many of us have been working for many years to fight hate and disinformation over social media companies, to fight uh, the rapid transmission of hate and disinformation, the coordinated organizing recruitment 
fundraising uh, and normalization of violence and racism uh, that white supremacist groups were using uh, Facebook to bring to bear. We are tracking, many of us, how uh, the platform was being used to spread disinformation. Right now, of course, we're seeing tons of disinformation around the elections, voter suppression, but uh, we were also just tracking how prolific the spread of disinformation about COVID uh, and the disproportionate effects of that disinformation on people of color. You know, of course, we know Black, uh, Lat Latinx, and Native American populations are disproportionately impacted by COVID. So the spread of COVID disinformation in and of itself is a racist act. And we found um, through this work, through these years of advocacy and through the advocacy of frankly over, you know, over 10 years of advocacy led by and large by women and people of color, we learned a few things about Facebook. And the number one thing we learned is that uh, despite other interventions and advocacy efforts and press and all that, uh, that they didn't really respond. They haven't really raised the bar on keeping their platform safe, on protecting their users' health and safety and protecting the health and safety of our democracy. So we'd all come to the point where we said, we think we have to boycott. We think we have to hurt, hit them in the pocketbook. Not because we think Mark Zuckerberg is going to, you know, move from a billionaire to a millionaire, but because that is the way that we need to make an impression on Facebook. So we came together, um, we or organized an advertiser pause for the month of July, as Chris mentioned, over 1200 advertisers and nonprofits uh, joined in pausing their advertising in that month. Uh, we saw Facebook uh, take a big drop on the stock market in one day and lose $56 billion in market capitalization. Um, but most importantly, we saw a renewed public dialogue about the impacts of hate and disinformation, and we saw it happening in a much more prolific way. Um, I'd be remiss to not just acknowledge uh, the incredible shoulders of the people that we stood on, both uh, people who've been organizing against hate and disinformation online for many years, but also the movement for Black Lives and the protests in the streets and all the energy that has caused not just government actors, but organizations and corporations to examine their role and in individuals, their role, our role in anti-Black racism. And, and with that momentum, um, we were able to capture uh, some attention around this issue. Um, I was really encouraged to see public polling from Accountable Tech indicating that not only had a majority of American voters heard about the Stop Hate for Profit campaign, but that 67% um, of American voters felt that Facebook needs to do more to stop hate and racism on the site. So as we know, the work is far from over. Um, despite the great success of the campaign, I still don't think we're seeing the type of commitment that we need to see from Facebook to stop hate and violence and disinformation and voter suppression. Uh, over that platform. And this is a heavy moment. The stakes feel really, really high. Um, we will continue to work. Uh, I know you all will continue to work. And we have to use the leverage points where we find them. There's not just one way to make change. We need inside help. We need outside help. We need to organize in the streets. We need to use whatever power we have to protect the health and well-being of American people uh, and the health and well-being of our democracy. So that's what's at stake, folks. Um, I hate to leave without having a tidy conclusion, but there's nothing more 2020 than that. But I will say I feel encouraged uh, by the number of people who've come out to fight hate and disinformation, the new voices, coming into the fight 
uh, to support the important work of protecting our democracy and stopping hate and racism uh, that is proliferating on Facebook. And I feel very humbled and grateful to accept this award on behalf of the Stop Hate for Profit campaign and my partners at Color of Change and HMC, LULAC, ADL, NAACP, Common Sense Media, Sleeping Giants, and Mozilla. So thank you all and good night. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for showing how the trophy spins. We didn't get to demonstrate that today either, but no, really. Uh, could, could this, this was a huge hit, Chris. <laughs> like, I can't tell you enough. This like was like 30 minutes of enjoyment for my Oh, family. yeah. Our, our <laughs> staff knows. They've seen it spinning in the office. Um, no, really, uh, and sincerely, congratulations. And thank you for representing the entire campaign here. And, and those of you who are part of the campaign who are with us tonight, um, I know Brenda's here from NHMC and others. Uh, we're, we're so glad that you could be with us. Dakery's here. Uh, I'm going to miss some folks. So I'll stop naming names. But um, uh, okay, we're running, we're running long on time. We're going to go into our breakout rooms now.